Hello everyone and welcome to my spoiler review for Solo, A Star Wars Story. If you have yet to see Solo, A Star Wars Story, well, I have a spoiler free review. You can check that out. And now is the time to go and see it because it's actually really fun. I gave it a middling review. I gave it a C plus, but I had to be realistic with some of my flaws. So I was like, even though it's a C plus, I still think it's a really fun movie and a really entertaining movie. C plus movies can be entertaining. Yeah, go see this shit. What I want to start with is one of my complaints with the movie was who's the main villain? Like, one of my complaints with this movie is who is the main villain? Like, who is the main villain? It can't be Dryden. Dryden's only in two scenes in the entire movie. He's basically the reason why Han Solo, Beckett, and their whole gang are trying to get this coaxium to him. He's a crime syndicate boss, but he's only in two scenes of the movie. It can't be Beckett because Beckett's a mentor to Han Solo. I mean, is it Amelia Clark's character, Kira? I mean, she gets on the horn with Darth Maul. Yeah, Darth Maul pops up in this movie. There's a cameo. There's a cameo with Darth Maul. She ends up killing Dryden Voss, and she gets on the horn. She ultimately takes the power that Dryden Voss had. She becomes basically the new crime syndicate boss, and she gets on the horn with Darth Maul, and did he really have to light up his lightsaber? I mean, come on, like, it was cool seeing Darth Maul on screen again, because yeah, even though I know he's in Rebels and the Clone Wars, I haven't gotten that far in Rebels, and I haven't seen any of the Clone Wars TV show, so to me, he's still dead until I see him pop up in the movies, or until I see those aspects of the TV show, so when he pops up and he removes his helmet, I'm just like, it's Darth Maul. And then the Duel of the Fates theme starts playing. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Dun 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 dun. So, but did he really have to light up his lightsaber? Like, it, it's a hologram. And from what I remember, at least, like, the lightsaber was red. I was like, I thought holograms, there were no colors in holograms. I thought it was just a hologram. Like, I don't know. That, that could be my memory toying with my mind. I'm not too sure. But they, he didn't really have to light up that lightsaber, did he? I feel like that. I feel like him. People are gonna say that Darth Maul in this movie is fan service. I don't think so. I think it's a cool, unique way to bring Darth Maul back into the Star Wars movie universe. But him lighting up the lightsaber, yeah, that's definite fan service. It's, it's just like, oh well, there's a lightsaber in every Star Wars movie, so here's Darth Maul's. Okay. Plus two, that whole scene just sets up a sequel for another Han Solo movie that we don't necessarily need, just like how we didn't necessarily need this movie. I don't want to see, I want, I don't want to see sequels to a Han Solo movie. I kind of want these anthology films just to be kind of a one and done thing. Like, we're not getting a sequel to Rogue One, obviously, because they all die. Just like how I don't want a sequel to, the, to Han Solo. Like, I know enough about Han Solo now and his backstory where I can just watch this and then go right to the original trilogy and The Force Awakens and be like, that's Han Solo. But seriously, who is the main villain? Is it Dryden? Is it Kira? Is it secretly Darth... Because of this scene, is it secretly Darth Maul? Is Darth Maul playing the strings here? Is he just in the background like the Emperor is and he just pops up for that one scene? I don't know. Like, there's a part of me that thinks Kira's the main villain, but then there's a part of me that's like, maybe it's Dryden that's the main villain. Or maybe it's Darth Maul just pulling strings in the background, like the Emperor. But I don't know. Like, I, I really think Kira had this whole thing in the back of her mind the whole time when she was on their adventure. And when, when she got the opportunity to kill Dryden, she did it. And then, I think this whole time, she was, obviously, she was in cahoots. That, that scene totally implies that she's in cahoots with Darth Maul. But, yeah, I think, so to me, that's basically me, the movie, telling me that she's the main villain, not Dryden or Darth Maul. She's kind of just like a pawn in Darth Maul's game, it seems like. So maybe Darth Maul's the villain and she's the pawn. I mean, I don't know. This movie really does lack a clear central antagonist. And I, there was another complaint of mine in my... Um, my spoiler-free review, this movie feels rushed. It really, really does. Because the first half hour of this movie, there's some there's some things where I'm just like, eh, that could have been done a lot better. For instance, how Han Solo gets the name Han Solo. That did not sit well with me. I thought that that was dumb. 
It was lazy writing. It was just a way to explain how his last name is Solo. Uh, the, cool, the cool thing about Han Solo's backstory in this movie is that he fought for the Empire. I really like that. But then... When he's trying to get through the Empire checkpoint, they're like, oh, well, uh, what's your name? He's just like, Han. It's like, you going alone? Yeah. Han Solo. What the fuck? Like, that, that's how he gets his name? That's how Han Solo gets his name. He, his, his full name at birth couldn't have just been Han Solo. His, he only had one name. Movie. Empire stuff with Han Solo is cool because you see there's legit like a scene that looks like it's actually like an actual war scene kind of like kind of like that invasion of Jedha in Rogue One that scene where the, like the stormtroopers just come in on the tanks and they have like the AT-AT -AT walkers and they're just blowing up the city of Jedha that felt like an invasion in like real life like this feels like an actual war battle and I was just like that scene blew me away and it added a different layer of death to Han Solo's character. I'm like, wow, Han Solo fighting for the Empire. He's part of the Empire right now. That is insane. But I liked it a lot. I was like, this this is really cool. Like, Han Solo was once an Imperial officer. All the stuff with Lando, awesome. I love all the stuff with Lando. Lando Calrissian in this movie is awesome. When they're, when they're doing the back and forth and they're bidding in that weird game. I don't know what it's called. I love how the final scene of the movie and the scene in the middle of the movie when Han first meets Lando are basically mirrors of each other. Except one of them, Lando wins. At the end, Han wins and he gets the Millennium Falcon. That's awesome. Another thing too, we get to see the Kessel Run. It was done in 12 parsecs, not 14. Confirmed. Castle Run was awesome. That was really cool. It was a really interesting original action sequence. When they do the Kessel Run, it feels like it's like at least like a half hour of the movie. That's the thing. This movie, the pacing is shit. Like every action scene feels like it's a half hour. There's some stuff in the middle too where they're like, there's some boring stuff here too. And I'm checking my watch sometimes and I'm like, God damn, this movie's dragging along. Like, it's 2 hours and 15 minutes. It feels like it's like 2.40 at times. Um, but the Kessel Run was awesome, especially when especially when they're going through, like, I don't know what it's... I forget what they call it, but he's like... They're going through it. It's like this thing where it's... They're in, like, a beast. They're getting chased by a beast. So that was pretty cool. Um, let's talk about Enfys Nest. Because they were the... A really cool aspect of the movie. They're racing to get the coaxium from Han Solo and his gang. They're racing against Han Solo and his gang to get that coaxium in that train sequence. Awesome. That's an awesome robbery and an awesome. <laughs> that 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 shit was rad. But then, but there was something fishy I kind of noticed about the leader of Enfys Nest. I was like, you kind of look like Sauron from Lord of the Rings. And then the reveal comes and. The person removes their mask, and it's just a girl. Look, I have no problem with it being a girl, but... You couldn't have done, like, something cooler? And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're on your side. Uh, what? Well, put your Sauron mask back on, lady. Look cool again. That's all I gotta say about that. Emphis Nest was cool, and they got kind of dumbed down. Um... In the end of this movie, like I said, there's too much backstabbing. Beckett backstabs Han. Han backstabs Kira. Kira backstabs Dryden. Dryden backstabs Kira. Kira backstabs Dryden again. Han kills Beckett. It's like, man, what the hell is this? Pirates of the Caribbean 3? Where everybody's backstabbing each other except in this is one scene? Wow! I, lo I, love, I, love when, I love when Han Solo kills Beckett, though. Like... Beckett's trying to tell him, like, he tells him you should never trust anybody. That's before he gets killed. That's when he reveals himself as a double agent. But when Han Solo and Beckett are walking on the beach, and Beckett's in mid-speech, and then Han Solo just shoots him, I'm like, yep, that's proof Han Solo shot first. You're probably wondering 
what this there's this new droid called L3. Probably wondering about that because the rumor is is that Lando is pansexual. Look, that shit doesn't bother me. Okay? Pansexual, trisexual, unisexual, transsexual, any sexual you want to be, that's fine. It adds layers to the characters. It's not being politically correct. I hate that argument. So that's all I'm going to say about it. But L3 as a whole, I feel like they tried to make her the next K2SO and they epically failed. Uh, she was annoying. Every scene she was in, she was annoying. Um, I could not stand her. Like I said, they they were just trying to make her the next K2SO. They're like, oh, K2SO, we can sell toys. He's he's charming, he's likable, so let's just do that with L3. And then L3 just came across as more annoying and unlikable. She wasn't really that likable, honestly. She hated Lando. Didn't like Han Solo. She basically killed them a bunch of times. Like, they should have been dead. So, I mean, what was the point with L3? I did not get that. That's something I didn't mention in my review. But, yeah, I did not understand that droid. This is the first movie in which C-3PO and R2-D2 do not appear, so maybe that was a substitute for them, but it didn't work at all. The big thing with this is that everybody's going to be talking about that Darth Maul cameo. It's probably the best scene in the movie. Might feel like it's shoehorned in. I like it, and I don't like it, as I said before, because Darth Maul's alive. We finally got him back. We can do justice to Darth Maul, thank God. But at the same time, I feel like it's just setting up more sequels to a Han Solo movie. Like I said, I think these anthology films should be one and done. Like, are we going to get four Obi-Wan Kenobi sequels? Are we going to get five Boba Fett movies? Probably not. I mean, just make it one and done. I love when Han and Chewie meet. When Han and Chewie meet... Really, really, really cool way of meeting. And it's also reminiscent of the Rancor scene in Return of the Jedi. That was really interesting. And I love the dynamic and the friendship between Han and Chewie. How they became friends. How Han knows a little bit of the Wookiee language even beforehand. That was really interesting. There is some, there is some really well done stuff in here. And then there's some stuff where it's just like, why did you do that to Han Solo? Why did you just say his... Why'd you just give him that last name randomly? Like, that makes no sense! I think I've covered all the bases that I want to talk about with Han, with Solo, a Star Wars story. For spoilers, I think that's going to wrap it up. There's probably a few things I left out, because I haven't... I'm filming this on Monday. Gave everybody the weekend to see it. I last saw this movie on Thursday. I've only seen it once. So, I gotta try and see it again. I probably should have waited to see it again before I did this video. But I wanted to get this video up because I wanted to talk about that. Mostly that Darth Maul cameo. I couldn't hold it in any longer. So, I hope you guys really enjoy this video. I hope you go see Solo Star Wars Story. I guess it's not performing all that well. But, uh... Oh, you last Jedi haters. But, uh... Yeah. Uh, I, had, I should have a couple more videos coming up this week. Uh, it's a movie roast. I want to get back into those. I've, I've done one movie roast. I want to try and do those every month. A segment on my channel called Movie Roast of the Month. I'm planning Stone Cold with Brian Bosworth. Uh, so check that out very soon. Uh, I should have a review of Hereditary on Thursday. Uh, and just keep coming back to my channel. There's a big video essay I'm going to be working on. Uh, that's going to take a really long time, um, and I hope it's kind of like some of my other video essays, like the IMDb ones, the Thomas the Tank Engine one that I did, you know, kind of something like that, um, and you can also check me out, I will be on a podcast, uh, Cinemania World Podcast, you can check that out on Podbean, my buddy Dwayne, who runs a Facebook page called Cinemania, um, I will leave that link in the description. I am also part of that page. I post my reviews that I put on YouTube there. Um, so you can definitely check that out. And we are going to be recording. He recorded episode one of the podcast. It's just him. But it's mostly going to be me and him 
uh, just discussing topics uh, in movies, what's going on in the movie industry lately. Uh, basically, big news. Uh, I think we're going to be uh, uh, I think we're going to be doing an episode today. I think we're definitely going to talk about some some spoilers for Hans for the Solo Star Wars story movie. Definitely, probably Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio in Spider-Man. So yeah, definitely check that out. That'll be a fun podcast for movie fans to check out. Guys, you are awesome. Uh, I will leave all my links to my social media accounts in the description below. You can check those out. I will leave some past reviews and other fun stuff at the end of this video, especially a place where you can subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. My name is Alex Madden, a certified G and a bona fide stud. Thank you.